elevators moving food from floor to floor, calling servants with a press of a foot, and storing food underground. Let's take a step back in time to rediscover some old home features. In this video, we are exploring 13 home features that have faded into history. At number 13, we have transom windows. These are small windows placed above doors or larger windows in homes. They were prevalent in architectural design during the 19th and early 20th centuries, commonly found in Victorian, Georgian, and colonial style houses. These windows served multiple purposes, including adding ventilation, allowing more natural light into rooms, and often acting as decorative elements. Their design varied from simple rectangular shapes to more ornate styles with decorative glass or intricate patterns. The need for transom windows decreased when central heating and cooling systems became popular. In contemporary architectural styles, fixed transom windows are popular. They add elegance and timelessness to a house. Laundry chutes were practical and convenient features found in older homes, especially during the mid-20th century. These were built-in passages or tubes running vertically within the walls. They allowed residents to dispose of dirty laundry easily from the upper floors into the basement or laundry room. Laundry chutes were a time-saving solution. People didn't need to carry bulky laundry baskets up and down stairs. These chutes were often integrated into closets or hallways, making laundry chores more manageable. However, washing machines and convenient laundry rooms on the same floor minimized the necessity for such features. Nevertheless, laundry chutes can still be found in commercial buildings, hotels, or larger residential complexes. Back in the day, dairy was delivered in a fascinating way. Milk doors. Milk doors were small openings, usually near the house's kitchen or back entrance. They let the milkman deliver bottles of fresh milk without entering the home. These doors had a small latch or swing door, allowing the milkman to leave bottles securely. The latch or swing door would then be closed securely, ensuring the safe storage of the delivered milk until someone from the household retrieved it. Families could have their fresh milk delivered without needing to be present, and the design of the milk door ensured that the milk stayed protected until it was collected by someone from the household. As refrigerators became more common and people started buying milk from stores, the use of milk doors declined. Nevertheless, milk doors were a testament to the efficient delivery systems of the time. Grand staircases were prominent architectural features in older homes. They added elegance and grandeur to their interiors. Upon entering, these expansive staircases were often the focal point, designed to impress and make a statement. Fine materials, such as hardwood, marble, or ornate wrought iron, were used to craft these. The staircase showcased craftsmanship and intricate detailing and also served as a symbol of wealth and status for homeowners. These staircases were strategically positioned, often in the foyer or central hall, creating a dramatic visual impact. They provided a majestic transition between levels, connecting various parts of the house. Over time, functionality took the place of aesthetics. Modern homeowners now favor more streamlined and space-saving staircase designs. At number nine, we encounter a house feature dedicated to servants. The servant floor button was a discrete device used in elite households. It was located in dining rooms or other selected areas. A servant floor button allowed diners to summon the butler of the house with a subtle step or press, eliminating the need for vocal requests. In the 19th century, these buttons were placed in elegant dining spaces where formal gatherings took place. They served as a symbol of luxury and meticulous attention to detail, allowing guests to signal the butler for assistance without interrupting the ambiance of the dining experience. The mechanism was simple. A step or gentle press on the designated spot in the floor would trigger a soft chime in the servant quarters, alerting the attentive butler. The butler would swiftly respond to the guest's needs and maintain the sophistication of the dining affair. Root cellars were storage spaces, commonly found in traditional homes before refrigeration was widely available. These underground or partially buried rooms were used primarily for preserving fruits, vegetables, and root crops. Typically constructed in rural or farmstead settings, root cellars were designed to maintain cool, dark, and often damp conditions. They varied in structure, ranging from dugout caves to specially built rooms, sometimes in a basement. These spaces were carefully crafted to ensure a stable environment that helped extend the lifespan of produce. Root cellars were vital to household food storage, enabling families to preserve their harvests year-round. They were especially crucial in winter, when fresh produce was scarce. However, 
As refrigeration became widespread, the need for root cellars diminished. It might seem odd to encounter a door divided into two parts, but that's exactly what Dutch doors are all about. Dutch doors, also known as stable doors or half doors, are unique because they consist of two separate sections, allowing the top half to open independently from the bottom. Originating in the Netherlands during the 17th century, these doors were initially designed to keep animals out while allowing fresh air and sunlight to enter the home. Their split design enabled people to enjoy the view or converse with passersby without fully opening the door. Dutch doors became popular in colonial America and were commonly found in farmhouses and rural settings. They provided practicality by allowing ventilation while keeping livestock away or serving as a barrier for small children and pets. At number six, we have one of the characteristic features of Victorian era homes. The parlor was a formal space for gatherings and showing off the family's status. Located near the front of the house, it aimed to impress guests. The parlor had fancy furniture like sofas and chairs, beautifully designed tables, and elegant decorations like carpets and drapes. These items added to the room's grand appearance. The parlor served multiple functions, often doubling as a music room, reading area, or even as a space for family activities. However, its primary purpose was for formal entertainment. Families would receive guests, host gatherings, or engage in social activities like playing music, reading, or conversing in this refined setting. The butler's pantry was a useful room in wealthy homes during the 19th and early 20th centuries. It acted as a connection between the kitchen and dining area, making meal service smoother. Inside, it had cabinets, shelves, and counters for storing and displaying dishes, glasses, and silverware. This space was where household staff, like the butler, prepared meals without disturbing the dining room. It often had sinks and sometimes extra appliances, helping in meal arrangements. Besides its practical use, the butler's pantry showcased the household's wealth and taste. However, as lifestyles changed and homes favored more open designs, the popularity of these pantries declined. Modern homes now prefer integrated kitchens and open layouts, reducing the need for separate service areas. Next, we have servants' quarters. These were dedicated living spaces in old homes where household staff like butlers, maids, or cooks resided and worked. These areas were separate from the main living areas and provided accommodation for domestic workers. These quarters were located in the upper or lower parts of the house, Elite households often had separate blocks dedicated to servants. The quarters were designed with simplicity compared to the grandeur of the main home. They typically had small rooms with basic amenities like beds, a communal area, and sometimes shared bathrooms. Servants' quarters were essential for households with live-in staff, ensuring they had a place to sleep, eat, and relax between their duties. Moreover, a bell was installed in the quarters so the household members could easily call the staff when needed. Boot scrapers might seem unusual nowadays, but these simple yet practical devices were once common sights outside homes and buildings. In the 1700s and 1800s, the lack of paved roads and good drainage systems made everyone's boots muddy. Boot scrapers were metal or wooden tools positioned near doorways designed to remove dirt, mud, and debris from the soles of shoes or boots before entering a building. Their purpose was straightforward, to help keep interiors cleaner by preventing the outdoor mess from being tracked inside. In urban areas, at least, boot scrappers are not needed. However, variations in wood and plastic could be found in rural areas. Washstands were essential furniture commonly used in homes during the 18th and 19th centuries. These stands were small, often made of wood, and featured a tabletop with a basin, pitcher, and sometimes a towel rack or storage space underneath. Primarily situated in bedrooms or near water sources, washstands provided a designated area for personal hygiene routines before indoor plumbing became widespread. People used them to wash their face and hands, and sometimes even for minor tasks like shaving or grooming. During their heyday, washstands were practical solutions for maintaining cleanliness and personal grooming. However, the need for standalone wash stands declined as indoor plumbing and bathrooms with built-in sinks became standard in homes. You can now find wash stands in period shows, movies, or architectural magazines dedicated to vintage and antique designs. At number one, we have the most interesting feature of today's list. 
Dumb waiters are small, movable elevators designed to transport food, dishes, or other items between different building floors. A dumb waiter was a small elevator like compartment housed within a shaft or cabinet. Before mechanical motors were added, they were operated manually by pulling ropes. They were usually situated in spaces like kitchens or dining rooms. They were incredibly helpful in transporting meals, dishes, or items between floors, eliminating the need for carrying them by hand. While primarily used in residential settings, dumbwaiters were also employed in businesses like restaurants, hotels, and mansions, streamlining service and facilitating the movement of goods between different levels. Which one of these old house features would you like to bring back? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And as always, thank you for watching.